Well, hello, xenographers everywhere, and welcome to another episode. And today we're going to be having a look at how to use the Fed4 rangefinder. This camera is probably the best value rangefinder in the world. It's possibly the cheapest rangefinder in the world. You can pick a good one of these up for anywhere between 10 to 20 pounds. All in all, a very nice little machine for the price of a couple of rolls of film. This, ladies and gentlemen, is the bargain of the rangefinder world. It comes with the fantastic Instar 61 f2.8 lens. It will accept all L39 rangefinder lenses. There is a massive range you can choose from. And if you're looking to get into rangefinder photography, this is the place to start. Comparing it to the Leica 2 from which it's derived, it's slightly wider, maybe 2 or 3 millimeters, but it is substantially taller, about 30% or so. It's also quite a bit heavier, so this isn't a camera you're going to be able to put in your pocket. The top plate's very neat and uncluttered. On the left here we've got the light meter with shutter speed settings around the outside edge, aperture readings here towards the center, and in red we've got the film speed selector. There's a cold shoe in the center. Here's the shutter speed selection dial. Shutter release is here. And here on the right, we've got the film counter around the outside edge. And a reminder for what kind of film you've got loaded here. So daylight and artificial light. So let's have a look at how to use the light meter. First of all, we're going to need to set the film speed. And we do that by turning this dial here. It's a little bit stiff on this one. So if we set it for, let's say that is around about 100 ISO. So the needle that actually gives the light reading is this one here at the top. And if I put my hand over the window, the light window, you'll see it move. So what we then do is, by turning this outer dial, we align the red pointer with that needle. And that gives us our light reading. So we can see that with the light we've currently got, we can use a shutter speed of 1 30th of a second at just over f4, or we can use a speed of 1 60th at just over 2.8, 1 15th at just over 5.6, and so on. So it really is a very simple meter to use, and it's actually pretty accurate. I've found it to be really good. The shutter speed dial is marked with engraved markings. So we've got one second here, just below the 30, and we've got the top speed, one five hundredth, all the way around here. Two things to be aware of when setting the shutter speed on any Russian rangefinder. Never, ever, ever change the shutter speed before you've wound on the film. You will damage your camera. Also, never, ever, ever turn the shutter speed selector between 30 and 1. Again, you will damage your camera. On the right-hand side of the camera, we've got the film counter. This turns by one notch every time you wind on. And after you've loaded a film, it can be set back to zero just by simply turning. The shutter release is here, just where you'd expect to find it, and it's threaded for use with a remote cable. Around the outside of the shutter release is this rather nicely chrome-plated control. This is to disengage the film before you rewind it. The film type reminder is on the inner part of the dial here, and it's just that. It's a reminder. It doesn't actually do anything. It just reminds you what kind of film you've got loaded. So we've got three film types. We've got daylight film, we've got artificial light film, and we've got another mark here. I'm not entirely sure what this does, but it's perhaps for infrared film. So if you're the forgetful type 
and you can't remember which film you've got loaded, just turn the dial. It's very easy to turn until you hit the appropriate mark. To set the shutter speed on this camera, always remember to first wind on. Now because the Fed has a lever wind, it's very easily done. Turn it around and the shutter is now primed. Only now can we change our shutter speed. So to change the speed, we lift the control, turn it to the setting you want and then let it fall into the slot. Turning this control anti-clockwise, you will be turning against spring pressure. And once you get past one fifteenth of a second, you'll also be turning against the pressure of the clockwork slow speed mechanism, which is actually fairly considerable pressure. So hold it firmly and guide it to the position you want. To focus this camera, like any rangefinder camera, it's a case of looking through the viewfinder, turning the lens focus ring and making that double image come together. So we're now going to look at film loading. The entire back comes off on this camera and to get it off there are two clips underneath. So we raise the clips and we give each one half a turn. You can then slide the back downwards slightly and take off the whole thing. After which the innards of the camera will be revealed. So to load film we need to attach the leading edge of the film onto this take up spool here. The spool is removable so pull it downwards and it will just come out of the camera. So just like on the old Leicas, what we need to do is thread the leading edge of the film underneath this clip here. It does take a little bit of pressure. So we'll feed it all the way round as far as it will go. And make sure that the edge of the film here is sitting flush with the face of the reel uh, at the bottom there. So there's our film ready to go back into the camera. And what we do is we simply place the spool onto the shaft, push it upwards, make sure it's fully home and we then place the cartridge into the other side. We may have to turn the cartridge a little so that it catches and goes fully home. Now you may notice that I've cut the leader here. This is ready to go into one of the older Leica models. You don't need to cut the leader on this camera. What you do need to do, however, is make sure that the teeth on the sprocket here are lined up with the sprocket holes and actually engaged with the sprocket holes on the film. The final step in loading, position the back onto the back of the camera and just gently push it upwards, turn the catches to lock and we're ready to go. Do remember, of course, to fire off a couple of frames so that you've got unexposed film ready to shoot. So to rewind your film, you first got to disengage the film drive mechanism. To do that, we're going to press that collar down slightly and then turn it towards the letter B and that will disengage the drive mechanism. So we just push down the collar and we're going to turn it until it stays in that down position. And we're now ready to rewind the film. This is the wheel that you turn to actually rewind the film. It's on the left hand side of the camera when viewed from the back. And once you've disengaged the film drive mechanism, all you do is turn this 
and keep on turning until the film is rewound. You'll feel a slight resistance when you come to the end of the roll. If you want to keep the leader out of the can, if you're going to develop the film yourself, don't turn it any further. If you're going to take it to a lab, keep on winding until the whole of the film is back inside the canister. And once you're done rewinding, just move the collar around until it rises. Fire off a frame to make sure it's all working properly. And there we are. This camera has a self timer mechanism. So if you want to take some old school selfies, you can. It's very simple to operate. First wind on the film. And when you've done that, turn this lever in an anti-clockwise direction right up to the top. To release, press this button. And there we are, old school selfies. So there we have it, the Fed 4. A very, very nice little rangefinder camera. Probably the cheapest rangefinder in the world. Accepts all L39 screw mount lenses. All in all, a very nice little machine for the price of a couple of rolls of film. If you want to try rangefinder photography, you just cannot go wrong with one of these. So let's end by looking at some of the images I've made over the years with this very camera. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope it's been of some use. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time for more Xenography. Music